User Notes, Accordance OS X. This podcast is at the basic level. It requires no knowledge of Accordance Bible software or Hebrew or Greek. Taking notes is a great way to record our insights into Scripture, our reflections on meaningful sermons or Bible studies we've heard, even our reactions to significant life events. Now, Wide Margin Bibles have been around for years for just that purpose, but even those only offer limited space. Some people also use spiral-bound notebooks for this purpose, but those get tattered easily or even lost. Fortunately, Accordance offers its users the ability to take notes right in the program. With unlimited space tied to specific verses of Scripture available in whichever translation we happen to be using, user notes offer us the ultimate chance to personalize our Bibles. Why would anyone want to create user notes? Well, we can use user notes for a variety of things, limited only by our imagination. Add our own cross-references. Record our own insights into Bible passages. Log our devotions and personal applications. Attach exegetical notes or Bible studies to specific passages. Annotate difficult passages with our research notes. Chronicle important life events and the scriptures that illuminated them and, the most ambitious of all, write a study Bible for our students or to pass on to posterity. User notes are different from user tools and have a different set of features. They are tied to specific verses in a particular text, available for any translation or language, contain text but not graphics or photos, display most fonts and styles but not Unicode, may include scripture links, but not other links. There are also three additional features we will cover in a subsequent podcast. These notes can also be synced with Accordance iOS, edited on Accordance iOS, and merged in Accordance OS X. It's easy to create a new user note. We click anywhere in the verse to which we'd like to add a note, then type command U. This dialog box will appear allowing us to select which user note file we'd like to edit. Now, your choices will be different, but to practice, just select any of them for now and click OK. This edit window will appear with a verse reference at the top. We type our note, then click Update, and our new verse note appears. This is the procedure to use each time we want to add a note to a verse. As we've just seen, user notes have both a display mode and an edit mode, both of which appear here. This user note is displayed in a parallel pane. It works just like any other module in Accordance. It scrolls with the text, has hypertext links that appear in the Instant Details box, and so on. Typing any character in a current note opens the Edit window, which is where we add, delete, or edit notes. Let's take a closer look at it. The text bar replaces Accordance's old text palette. It allows us to choose the font, size, color, style, and baseline for our text, and we can mix them within the same note. Notes are not yet Unicode compatible, but will support a variety of different languages, including Hebrew and Greek. We can even turn Bible references into hypertext links using the Make Link button at the bottom bar. The navigation arrows allow us to create a new note in the next or previous verse or move directly to the previous or next note. Once we're done, we save the changes by just clicking Update. It's only at this point that our work is saved and changes made in the display window. Want to just open user notes? The accordance symbol for user notes is a pad of paper with a pencil on it. We can open them from any of the several places this icon appears on the Accordance desktop. We can open them directly from the library, amplify to them on the resource palette, or open them in a parallel text pane. If we have multiple notes, we can then just select the one we want from the drop-down list. The existence of a user note for a specific verse is indicated by a red dot or triangle to the right of the verse. The triangle indicates more than one. Double-clicking on either of these is yet one more way to open user notes. Like any other Accordance file, how we open a user note makes a difference where it opens and to what. Using the library will open it to the beginning in a new tab or zone. Double-clicking the notes marker opens it to the current reference in a new zone. 
using the icon in a search or text window opens it to the current reference in a parallel pane which will then scroll with a text. Finally, selecting a reference and amplifying to the resource palette opens it in a new search window and searches it for that reference. If a user note is opened in its own search window, it can be searched by two fields, reference or content. By reference means the verse to which the note is attached. Content, on the other hand, is everything else. Normally, a user would search for a word or phrase. However, in this example, I've searched for Acts 9-2 in the content field. Accordance has found that single occurrence, highlighting it here in Burgundy. Now, this means we can actually search our user notes for internal scripture references. Sooner or later, most of us will want to create our own user notes file. It's easy to do. Open the primary text in a workspace, the one to which we'd like to add notes, then select New Notes File from the Resource Palette. A dialog box will appear asking us if we just want to add a single note or create an entirely new user notes file. Click OK and another dialog box will appear asking us to name this new user note file. Name the file then click OK again. One less dialog box will appear asking us if we're sure we want to create a whole user notes file. Click OK one last time and we've created our first user notes file. We can see it if we click and hold the user notes icon for adding a parallel pane. Let's go ahead and open it even though it will still be blank. We can add notes to it at any time, whether it's open or not, just by following the procedure we covered at the beginning of the podcast. Here it is again, by way of reminder. Click anywhere in the verse to which we'd like to add a note, then type Command U. When this dialog box appears, Choose the user note file we'd like to use and click OK. The edit window will appear with a verse reference at the top. We type our note, then click update, and our new verse note is saved and displayed. I should also point out here that user notes can be created for any text, not just biblical text. That includes Qumran, inscriptions, rabbinic texts, pseudepigraphic texts, apostolic texts, or any other text in your library collection. Got a great set of user notes you'd like to share with others? Consider uploading it to the Accordance Exchange. It's available via the community link on the Accordance homepage. Follow the links to the Accordance Exchange where you'll find instructions for submitting your notes as well as modules available for download submitted by other users. Now, let's create some user notes in Accordance. The very first thing we ought to do is to take a look at the different ways to open user notes. You'll notice that I have my library scrolled so that my notes appear and here you can see a selection of user notes that I have. Now we don't need to look at all of these but if I double click mark for soldiers you'll notice that it opens in its own zone in its own search window. Now that's really convenient for some purposes, but one of the things I don't like about it for this purpose is that if I click over here, you'll notice that I scroll the text, but the notes themselves don't scroll with them. And that's one of the problems, or one of the advantages of a parallel zone. The same thing is true if I click here in the ESV, notice that the red dot appears right next to Mark 1-2 indicating that there is a user note for this particular verse. If I double click it, once again it opens in that separate zone. I'll dismiss it. Now let's search for Mark 1-2 in all of my user notes, like so. I just amplified it and searched for all notes, and I happen to know that Mark for Soldiers is the only user note that I have that has Mark 1-2 as a reference. By the way, as long as this is open, let me point out that we can search both by reference and by content and that we can switch user notes on the fly. The last way of opening it is the one that I prefer and that is I can open a user note by simply clicking in a parallel pane which means when I scroll through these various texts these notes are going to scroll as well. Now how about adding a user note? Well, Nothing could be simpler. I'll click in the reference to which I want to add a note in this case mark 1 1 and I type command U and an edit window pops up. In this case, I'm going to type something simple, relatively 
short observation. This verse was actually the title for this gospel, not part of its contents. And here I'm going to go ahead and put compare Matthew 1, 1. Now this will give us an opportunity to do a couple of different things. First of all, if I want to adjust the font size or the color, well, let's adjust the color. I can change this to forest. I can take gospel here, and why don't I change it to orange? And I'll go ahead and make it bold. By the same token, if I want to take a word and make it a superscript or a subscript, I can do that easily. So here are the menus of choices in the font bar which we saw earlier. Perhaps more importantly, if I want to make a scripture link, all I have to do is to select the scripture. And notice that I have not selected the parentheses nor the abbreviation before the scripture, just the scripture reference itself, and I'll put make link. Once I'm done with all of my editing, I simply click update and notice that the new note is displayed. Now I see that there's a period which I forgot to insert in this note. This gives me a perfect opportunity to show you the other way to begin editing user notes. And that is simply click in the display and type any character. I just typed a period and it automatically opened the edit window. I'll go ahead and add something short. This is true of many biblical books. There. Now I could click update, which would let you see the display, but instead I'm going to show you the navigation arrows. Notice that if I click note, I can go to the next note or the previous note. And by the way, if I decide, for example, that I want to add a new note to Mark 1-3, I can click the add arrow and it goes down one to the very next verse. And I'll just type something simple here. Here is a new note. That makes it very, very easy to read a text and to begin commenting on it verse by verse by verse. And by the way, I can move this edit window wherever I would like and resize it so that it can be in a nice handy space for doing that kind of thing. I'll click update here. Now if I go ahead and click by verses, you'll see that the notes now scroll with the text there's the new note on Mark 1-3, the previous note on Mark 1-2, and the note on Mark 1 verse 1. That's all there is to making a set of user notes for yourself. Now that you know more about user notes, let me encourage you to use this accordance feature regularly. Whether you're a prof writing a commentary for her students, a believer journaling a spiritual growth, or a text critic jotting notes for that future best-selling publication. In a subsequent podcast, we'll cover how to sync the user notes we create in accordance with our iPhones, iPads, and iPod Touches. We'll also cover adding and editing notes as well as merging user note files. Until then, this has been Dr. J for Accordance Bible Software. Thank you for watching this episode of Lighting the Lamp.